All right. Welcome back to the free agent episode of the Horseman Pro Football Talk podcast. I'm Brad. And I'm Hefe. All right. Let's get right into it. Big news. Your boy today got paid. Got a big old payday. Derek Carr got a lot more than I expected he was going to get, especially from the Saints and what their cap situation is. Yeah. I, I'm happy to see him land somewhere. I, I really thought he was going to end up in New York. I don't know why, you know, as Jim Morris said, we'll never know. So um, I love that quote, by the way. That's why I can't stop talking about it. But Derek Carr is headed to Nolens. A good spot for him? You know, it just – it felt like the right fit for both the Saints and for him. He needs to go to a team that can be more competitive. Like the teams that he was given in Oakland and Las Vegas, like they just didn't put the pieces around him, whether it was the offense or the defense. Like – the team was never great. And and what they do in New Orleans, the way they manipulate the cap situation every year and keep that team competitive as long as they have good quarterback play, I think you could see Derek Carr finally get to the playoffs and win a playoff game if they're able to retain uh, a lot of people on that Saints team. Yeah, I, I would really like to see that. Um, I'm, I'm really not sure about Dennis Allen yet. We, we haven't talked a lot about him. Um but I think uh, one of Dennis Allen's problems was just solved. And uh, so we'll see what he can do with Derek Carr. I, I believe we've talked a lot about this. I, and the example I use all the time is Tony Romo. Tony Romo plays in a better system. Tony Romo probably he has several playoff wins and maybe even uh, made it to the Super Bowl. Um, and I think Derek Carr is that kind of guy. I think um, for whatever has happened, he just hasn't had – a good uh, even times when the system's been good there's been other problems around in and around the organization uh, i just think getting out of vegas is probably the best thing for him i don't know that going to new orleans was the solution but i'm hoping it is i'm really hoping that uh this is a good for hit fit for him and uh he can you know i know that you're a raiders fan was it Ra was it the raiders or is it Derek carr a little bit of both okay I, and I and I, I I feel bad for Raiders fans. Mark Davis may end up being as big a fucking idiot as his father was. Uh, it certainly appears that they just keep tinkering with it and keep fucking things up. Um, and I'm not so sure that I, I think Josh McDaniel was a bad hire. I think they should have let him go. I, I this whole thing I don't I don't get it. Um, maybe I'm wrong. And in two years, a year or two, the Raiders are competitive and. Maybe they do know what they're doing. I don't think that's happening. Um, I think Derek Carr, Derek Carr is lucky to get out. Yeah, and I mean, even if Derek Carr goes to New Orleans like, and still doesn't go to the playoffs and win a playoff game, like if they lose a lot, you know, he he just got four years, $150 million. A hundred of, of that is guaranteed. And so, I mean, for the first year, it's like $60 million of his guaranteed, something crazy like that. So for him, like at this point, who cares? But you can't if you can't win, you might as well get paid. Exactly. So uh good for him. All right, who do you want to talk about next? Uh figure we just kind of go down this list. Carson Wentz is the next one uh, on the list. Of, yeah, I mean, you gotta assume he's gonna be a backup somewhere, right? Nobody's if, gonna make him if that. It. If I mean this it, it's like Mason Rudolph down on this this list. I mean, and, and maybe even Teddy Bridgewater at some point. Marcus Mariota. At some point, these got to come. These runs got to come to an end. I mean, they're not, they're not doing anything. Um, are they worth? Are they worth even picking up? Those names that I just mentioned are any of them worth picking up? You know, the Marcus Mariota one will be interesting because it'll be interesting to see like what the Falcons are going to do. Are they going to draft a guy, get a guy in free agency? If they can't get anybody. Do they bring Marcus back? Um, it'll be interesting to see what they do. Marcus. Like at this point, he's had a good run. If I'm a GM, I wouldn't worry about it. Carson, obviously, I wouldn't want Carson. He's a good backup. You know what I mean? You could certainly have Until worse you backups. Need yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the kind you know, of backup. Your quarterback goes down. At, you, you, you know, I mean, you're 12 and four in a season. Your quarterback goes down and Wentz comes in and takes over. You're flipping coins, man. I, he's just too unreliable and inconsistent. Uh, made us Rudolph, uh, Mason Rudolph's a punk. Yeah, I don't even, I, I don't, I can't, I can't stand to look at him. I like Teddy, but Teddy's too inconsistent, you know? So I, I, maybe I'll buy in with Mario Mariota. He's been, he's been a good backup, consistent backup. Um, I'm, I'm more into guys like Jacoby Brissett because he works. 
He's consistent. He brings it. You know what you're getting with him. And when you put, when you have to put him in, you know what you need to do to make Teddy successful. And he will not let you down under those circumstances. I'd much rather go with a guy like uh, Jacoby Brissett and, and maybe even Andy Dalton, good, you know, backup quarterback. He's available. I think Joe Flacco, the ship has sailed. Uh, there's a rumor Mike White might come to Miami. That would be very interesting. Would be very interesting. And I'm a little weird about Taylor Heineke. I, I, he might be more than what people, what he's been able to show. Uh, like we were talking about with, you know, Derek Carr being stuck in, in Vegas. Um, so it would be nice to see him in a good system and see what he can do. Because uh, Lord knows the commanders haven't been in. But anybody that's listening is wanting to know when we're going to talk about Lamar Jackson. Uh, you know, I was thinking about that on my way home from work. I was listening to a YouTube video, and they were talking about Lamar Jackson. I just started thinking, like, the Ravens, and, and the Ravens, I've said it a bunch on this show, the Ravens are my second favorite team. They always have been. And the fact that they're not paying Lamar, like, what are you doing? Like, Eric DaCosta always gets praised for being a great drafter and this and that, but, like, it's just at this point, it's just stupid not to pay Lamar. Like quarterbacks like that don't just fall off trees. I understand there are quarterbacks at the top of this draft that people are going to go get that are going to be guys right away, but the Ravens aren't in a position to get one of those guys. So, like, at this, you have to pay Lamar Jackson. Like, don't worry about a franchise tag, don't worry about how it's going to hurt the cap. Like, the going rate for quarterbacks is 40 million plus. Yeah. And, and and they're not offer they're not getting even close to that number from everything that, that I've heard. So um, well, there there has to be a reason. Uh, whether it's a good reason or not, I don't I, I don't know, but th- there's a reason. And and I would I would love to know what that reason is. Is it is it have they challenged him over the last couple of years to do something better, to improve in something? He's not doing it. Are they having some kind of a mental pissing match? Um is he just not happy there? I mean, I, I, there, there's something fundamentally driving this situation for them not to pay him. Uh, and I wish we knew what that was, that because I would make this conversation much more interesting and in, in trying to figure out what's going to happen, where he's going to go. But we've seen stranger things happen. But the longer this goes on, the more I'm inclined to think that Jackson's gone. It sure feels that way, especially because, like, in this situation, you have to remember Lamar Jackson represents himself. He doesn't have an agent. He never has. So he he's doing this on his own. So it's legitimately whatever he does is what he feels like doing. And when Eric DaCosta came out, I think it was at the beginning of Combine Week, when Eric DaCosta, uh, the Ravens GM, came out and said – I, I don't remember the exact quote, so this is verbatim, but, you know, basically said, you know, the players that were drafting – aren't getting the job done, specifically talking about the wide receiver room, saying, you know, we we keep missing on guys and we haven't drafted a superstar, and which is shitting on all the guys that they've drafted over the last couple of years that are still getting better, like Rashad Bateman. And so, you know, with the comments that have happened, everything that's gone on there, it sure feels like Lamar Jackson is, is probably not going to sign the – the franchise tag that they're inevitably going to put on them. And, and I've tried telling people for months, like there's no way Lamar's signing that. If he wanted to be there, he would have already signed the deal. And he obviously there's some friction there that is causing that not to happen. I don't, I don't think it will happen. Well, and that scenario is a little toxic. You know, I know, uh, I know uh, two basketball coaches, high school basketball coaches in Indiana have been coached about the same amount of time. One of them has a 73% win percentage. The other one has like a 35% win percentage. The difference between the two is one of them blames their players for not being good. And the other one praises their players for being good. Right. I mean, one, (laughs) I don't think I need to say much more than that. If, if your leadership is throwing guys under the bus, they're, they're probably trying to cover up their own inadequacies in the office and it sounds like it might be a toxic situation all the more reason that lamar w- would roll so where's he gonna go oh that's a good question indianapolis i mean that would be some shit ballard would pull out of just out of nowhere that that is the ideal situation like at the current moment i'm like all in on drafting either cj stroud or anthony richardson at number four 
Um, but if we can get Lamar Jackson instead, like, sure, go ahead, bring me Lamar Jackson, somebody that I know has been there, done that, and can win right now. It, there's the key. You said it right there. We've talked about this before. My fear has been that the Colts are going to have to rebuild. But if, if they see enough of this core left over from the last couple of years that is really, really, really good, and they can plug and play in the system. So they bring a guy like Jackson in, and and Shane Steigen can build this offense around him with JT, and the defense holds fast, and they can make some upgrades. They could be a contender immediately. Um, whereas if they pull a young quarterback, you know, there's going to have to be a learning curve. Um, you're at least at least probably looking at a year, maybe two. Um, so that's an interesting proposal, and it would be something uh, that just like Ballard to kind of. Flash is number four. Maybe we're going to trade up and this and that. And boom, I don't know, suddenly back out of nowhere and bring in Lamar Jackson. Uh, it would be pretty cool. Yeah. And, you know, if if the trade, if it, something doesn't happen where Lamar Jackson ends up in Indy, another area where I could see Lamar Jackson going, whether it's like signing the franchise tag, you know, just a sign and trade kind of thing. Or, or whether he goes in free agency and the Ravens just kind of let him walk, which I don't see happening. Uh, but would be the New York Jets. You know, they're talking about trading a lot to go get uh, Aaron Rodgers. I've heard a lot of that lately. And if they're going to do that, why wouldn't they trade a bunch to go get Lamar Jackson? Yeah, I, that's a good point. In, unless our offense doesn't accommodate for somebody like ja Jackson. I, and I don't know whether they do or don't. I know, I know Steichen is a – a master of building the offense around who he has. Um, I don't, I don't know about yay or nay about New York. I don't, I don't know that. That would be the only reason that I could think that they wouldn't. Um, Cause I know they were, they were interested in Carr. They're interested in Rogers. I, again, I don't know why they wouldn't be in, interested in Jackson as well. Speaking of Aaron Rodgers, what's going on there? I heard, um, I heard today that the rumors really heated up that he is being shopped around, but his contracts killing their options. But, We've heard all this. We hear this every year with Aaron Rodgers. I don't know what to believe. I don't either. And at this point, I don't know if Aaron Rodgers is going to be playing again. Um, you know, after the darkness retreat, he went on a podcast. I believe his name is Marcus Aubrey or Aubrey Marcus, something like yeah. that. And uh, went on that podcast. I listened to that whole thing. And, man, it sure feels like Aaron Rodgers is just ready to be done with it. You know, everything that goes on in the media and all the shit that he takes, like he, he seems like if he decided to quit playing, he would be at peace with it. Um, but if he came back again, because of how, how his contract is and how much money there is there, um, I feel like it's either green Bay, the New York jets or retirement. Yeah, I know. I mean, I don't know if there's anybody else that would, would dump that kind of money. The, the full equation, right? There's not a team that would dump that kind of money that Aaron Rodgers feels would be competitive enough to get his attention. I think the Jets are interesting enough right now to, to be intriguing enough to somebody like Rodgers to think they would convince him, you're the piece we need to win. We, don't, we Look what we did last year. We just need you here. You know, there's a lot of other teams that may throw money at him that just, it would just be, you know, a shit season at the end of a seller career. And I'm sure, I'm sure he doesn't want to do that. <laughs> I would think, I would think he wouldn't, wouldn't want to do it anyway, but especially where he's at in life with, with what he's done with um, holistically with those things. So I, I think I agree with you. I, I don't have any other information to argue there. Now, Tom Brady's on this list. Yeah. I don't back out. <laughs> I don't know. I heard the latest I heard on Tom Brady was that like maybe he could because I guess like he retired for good to in an attempt to get back with Giselle. I don't know if that's a real report. Um, it's just something that I heard. Um, but um, I don't know. It doesn't feel like Tom Brady's coming back. Well, she uh, he I, I'd heard the same thing that he uh, he put off his broadcasting career. He left the NFL, put off his broadcasting career, tried to get her back, and that she said, uh, I'm not interested. If she's really not interested, uh, there's a chance he might come back. And I, I'm telling you, man, Vegas, fe <laughs> I, Vegas feels like I feel like I got this like core weird feeling that that is inevitable. I, and I don't know why. So 
we'll just mark this down. If I'm right, we'll bring it back up. If I'm wrong, we'll just pretend I never said anything. Right. Because <laughs> I feel like because of who Tom Brady is, like there's absolutely a chance he could come back again. But like in my head, I'm – I've wanted Tom Brady to retire for 10 seasons. So like <laughs> in my mind, I'm like, yeah, he's just going to stay retired. Do us all a favor and stay out of the right, game. Right. right. Uh, all right. Let's talk about the important ones. And I don't mean to, I don't mean to dismiss anybody we've talked about. All right. Uh, I think, I think Derek Carr's in this category because I, I, I don't think Rogers really go anywhere. Jackson's kind of a toss up. I don't know the Ravens are going to let him go, uh, but, but the ones that are really going to be on the move, Derek Carr, obviously just signed with the Saints, Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, and Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, and maybe Daniel Jones. I mean, if they're if he if he's going to leave, I think these are the guys that these teams are going to be clamoring. They're going to be fighting over. Um, they're, they're solid guys. Baker Mayfield showed he can play when he went to Los Angeles. Uh, he kind of re- resurrected that confidence in him a little bit so uh what's going on this is a carousel what's going on with these guys okay so i'm gonna give you my prediction on these because uh I've, I've thought a lot about this especially today i've heard a lot of stuff uh today and saw some stuff on twitter so baker mayfield latest i've heard on that is that he might go back to the rams with matthew stafford's injury history and the fact that he's probably going to be retiring maybe after the 2023 season they're talking about baker staying there being the backup sean McVay ended up staying not having a full rebuild having his quarterback for the future that sort of thing guy that he already has a relationship with some of the players like the coaches like him so baker could be in Los Angeles. That's what I think is going to happen. Sam Darnold is an interesting one. Going back to the Panthers seems like a thing that could happen. I could see Frank Reich taking a chance on him, at least as a backup role, maybe even to compete to be the starter. Jimmy Garoppolo to the Jets feels inevitable. Reconnecting and, and reuniting with Robert Salah over there, a guy that he knows there's some familiarity there and a guy that has proven that he can take a team and win if the pieces are there. So I think he ends up with the Jets. And, of course, Daniel Jones uh, is going to re-sign with the Giants, in my opinion. Yeah, I think Jones is probably pretty safe. They'd be foolish to really let him go. And I think everything you said about those others makes sense. Uh, I hadn't uh, really thought about the Mayfield thing, him staying in Los Angeles, but uh, that – that sounds like very plausible uh, because he came right in. Obviously, it's the system, man. I mean, obviously, there's something about the system that fits who he, his personality. The guy walked in on a Wednesday and freaking played his ass off on a Sunday. Um, and that's that's incredible. And um, so when pieces fit, you got you got to try you got to try to work around it. So that makes a lot of sense to me. I'd like to see – it'd be interesting to see Darnold go back to the Panthers and see what Wright can do with him. I, I don't know if he has a – it's business. I was going to say if he wanted to go back there or not, but it's business, and it's a new situation. Uniforms are the same. Everything else is different. Uh, and, of course, I'd like to see Jimmy Garoppolo give it one – you know, I like Jimmy G. I, I, I really do. That uh, guy's been hurt. I'd like to see him get another chance to play in a good system and, and, uh, and win some games. So – you want to talk about any of these other guys? Uh, no, I think we've pretty much covered anybody that needs to be anything. talked about. Yeah.